no matter what aspect of life uh, or existence you look, the, the profound impact of this cultural shift is, is imprinted in every aspect of our life. Uh, in a practical sense, the hunting and gathering culture usually has a population distribution of one person per every square mile. While uh, to contrast that with even rural uh, farming uh, situation, it's a hundred times higher than, than that, where you have a hundred people per every uh, ten square miles. Now this is to, not to include anything about urban density or suburban density. So anyone who knows and experiences the kind of inner freedom one ex has just through the experience of open space, of, of space in which you can sense the, uh, aloneness and direct relationship with your environment. This, the f openness of space is very important for that kind of experience. Um, on, a, on a more uh, physiological level, it's very one of the most prominent or contrasting uh, bits of evidence was the remains of prehistoric indigenous people that were exhumed from the region of Turkey and Greece. Now these, prior to agriculture, the skeletal frames of both men and women were five to six inches taller than those skeletons that were found uh, following the introduction of settled uh, fixed settlement and agriculture. Um, that, that means it was not only uh, had to do with nutrition, but that the skeletons themselves had been compressed and deformed by the burden of labor, labor the sort of self-subjugation that agriculture uh, represents. In other words, you have to, uh, the, the transformation of the mystic, the hunter, the dancer, the wandering uh, indigenous nomad into the builder, the farmer, the, the, uh, the, the unskilled worker. Uh, and <clears throat> this change is, is in vocation reflects a whole change in, in, in spiritual identity of the entire race. Uh, another really interesting aspect of this is that, and it, it touches upon something that's very key to us, the idea of individuality. Uh, we have come to, uh, been conditioned to believe that individuality is a flowering of the, uh, the civilized and technological growth of humanity. But to the contrary, in, it has been proven in almost every indigenous hunting and gathering culture, children, by the time they're three to four years old, are completely independent for their own food. In other words, they walk along with a group, and they get their own berries and roots, and by that time they've already learned, because of their constant companionship with their mother in the first few years of life, they know where their food is, and they are independent. They need no uh, reliance on the system or on their parents to feed themselves. Now, if, if you want to be uh, practical on, on this, the idea of sensing oneself as an independent, autonomous individual uh, is, uh, you know, it's... it's it's paradoxical to think that we who are completely dependent upon a system for our, our, the very simple basics of life could ever actually achieve the individuality of a people who, by three or four, could be lost in the wilderness for weeks and could feed themselves. As a matter of fact, the adolescent initiation in many indigenous cultures um, requires that bo both the male and female go into the wilderness by themselves and live totally uh, on their own resources and on the skills that they have acquired 
in, in terms of, of deriving their sustenance directly from nature. And most of those processes are spiritual processes. The, they, the Aborigines of Australia, for example, did not follow wall, wallaby or kangaroo herds. Their walking, their movements were dictated by the mythological song lines. In other words, they traveled uh, uh, the routes and paths throughout Australia. And some of these tribes, it's proven, have walked the entire circumference and through the interior of the entire continent of Australia. And those walks are guided by following stories, creation stories, about how certain areas were created. And when they arrive at these places, they have, as I said, the imperative of ritual, a dance, and art. They re-perform and reiterate the story of creation in a ceremonial um, performance. So their food was a food that was presented there in relationship to the story, what was offered by the earth uh, in response not to the, a, a practical um, uh, calculating uh, relationship to hunting down a prey, but just receiving what was there. In some places, they would go to mountaintops during a time where a butterfly was uh, going through its um, uh, formation and release into its, its uh, form of flight, its insect form, and they would eat just butterflies and moths were by, that were there by the thousands. So if you take out that practical uh, hunter and prey, and you realize that, it, and this has been verified by anthropologists, very often the kangaroo uh, herds would follow the aborigines because kangaroos love the music and dance. Uh, <clears throat> so if you have a, a situation where people are celebrating life through ceremony and in the process, a child is already independent for sustenance at three or four years of age. Here is a, a condition in which individuality is really based on a physical truth, a physical foundation. Um, in this case, then, their allegiance, their sense of belonging to a group is not based on need and interdependency as we experience, uh, because they're free to go by themselves at any time, but they're drawn to the group and to interrelationship out of the love and joy of kinship, out of the patterns of exchange um, and interaction, not out of dependency and, and uh, obligation and responsibility based on, on need. So, these are all nuances, uh, but they're very profound uh, internally and externally in the, in the shift that happened. So in a certain sense, uh, many people have realized that the expulsion from the garden, the introductory story of the book of Genesis, is basically the end, uh, a, a symbolic way of depicting the end of the hunting and gathering era or cycle of humanity. When the, the earth really, the entire earth was a garden. Uh, and of course the early books of, of, uh, of the Hebrews, the early testaments of, of Moses are about expunging the, the indigenous people of the area in, in which the, the tribes of Israel moved in and co colonized the area of Canaan. And there is a great emphasis on the importance of destroying and obliterating even the memory of this way of life. Uh, this way of life that is symbolized perhaps by the serpent who the earth or telluric energy who whispers in the ear of the feminine, the memory of the previous phase of, um, 
our existence. But I, I think it's important that no matter how we, deeply embedded we are in terms of our individual life in in urbanization, in the technological, uh, civilized process, all of us can have somewhere I, in our racial memory the, the uh, core, the seed, the essence of having at one time passed through the indigenous phase. And this memory, this, this deep recollection, is, I think, at this phase in which there is so, so much potential of termination, the memory of our beginning has holds a very specific and important profundity.